celebration. Hello. It's an, truly an honor to be here today with all of you. And I believe that we're all here to help each other. And as we go through life and experience change and positive growth, we gain insight. And with that clarity, we're able to facilitate change with others during their journey of transformation. Thank you. So last year, I was in Jordan. This is me in Wadi Rum, riding a camel. And I went to, with my family. And this was truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be there as a Fulbright Scholar, teaching at the University of Jordan and conducting research. As an educator, I've always wanted to go on a Fulbright experience. And as an Arab American, immigrating from Baghdad, Iraq to Boston as a baby with my family, I've always wanted to go back to my roots and to the region of my heritage and to learn and also to be able to give back and contribute. As a mother, I've wanted to provide my children with also an international experience. I went, this is me, I'm six years old, oops, I'm six years old and we went on to Sweden. My father was on sabbatical. He's a botanist, a scientist, research professor, and dean. And he took us all, six of us, uh, to Sweden. And we learned the language. My name means speak in Swedish. Uh, my name also means uh, little palm tree in Arabic. And my father, being the botanist, was conducting research on uh, palm trees at the time, date palms. So that's how my name came about. Anyway, we learned about the culture and traveled quite extensively and came together very closely as a family and learned quite a bit. And so I wanted that experience um, with my children. And learning and the power of knowledge and education resonates very strongly with my family. My father shared with us throughout my life that um, he did not receive a monetary inheritance but was given an education. And an education is the most powerful thing to have, and no one could take that away from you. And learning is not only one of my values, but also my passion. And I'm able, as an academic dean, I'm able to create opportunities for students and empower their lives through education. We even have some of our students here taping. So my intention for this experience was to be very open and to an opportunity for self-reflection and to gain some inner peace. And while I was there in Jordan, as you may know, the whole Middle East and North Africa was going through transformation and through an Arab Spring. And at the same time, my life was turned upside down in being in, in Jordan. So I went through my own transformational change and had a Tala spring. So our springs happened in parallel, but in reverse direction, which I'll explain. When I think of spring, I think of change, growth, and vitality. The issues that resulted in the Arab Spring are not unique to the area. They've been going on for decades in the Middle East and North Africa, and also are quite universal. People are against corruption, against unemployment and poverty, people wanting human rights, competitive education, and a competitive marketplace relevant to their own economy and the world economy. So the people were ready for change. They came together as a collective voice, reaching a critical mass and having courage to make that change. They used technology and social media and they reached that tipping point and then which resulted in the revolution. There are a lot of similarities and differences in the region, but we really need to remember that not all of the springs that happened in the different countries were the same. And to take on a holistic approach when working with our partners in different countries, taking into consideration 
the individuals as well as the institution's mission and how does that relate with the country, the region, and the globe. The there are challenges such as bureaucracy, skepticism due to colonialism, and imposed wars such as in Iraq and in World War II. World War II ended in the mid-40s, but the impacts of war can remain. And I think of my sister when she was walking with her husband in Egypt near the Suez, and he stepped on a mine. And that mine was a, hidden, was a forgotten mine from World War II. Now that mine exploded, and they're very lucky to be survivors of that explosion but it left permanent physical scars and impacted their lives, not only on the individual, but we must remember that wars impact generations and nations. She also reminds me that we can overcome challenges through perseverance and resilience by listening, building trust, and mutual understanding, and that's what we all do as Fulbrighters. We build that mutual understanding as global ambassadors. And also we can take on the ro role as change facilitators to help institutions build from within. And part of being an effective change facilitator is knowing yourself. And these are words that resonate with me. The Latin phrase carpe diem seize the day. I really like that. I don't only seize the day, but seize the moment, taking advantage of all opportunities that come my way. Also the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. My norm, though, I usually function at this one, courage to change the things I can but I would really like to be having more inner peace and accept the things I cannot change. So this is what happened to me during my um, experience in Jordan. As I mentioned, this is my norm, seizing the day, and then I had a change where I was able to accept things I cannot change. And an example is um, while I was sharing um, at the university, my, my research, I was looking at uh, teaching and learning of STEM programs, st science, technology, engineering, and math programs, and looking specifically at the assessment piece. Uh, most people weren't very interested, uh, it seemed to me, uh, about my research. I did gain insight, though, from my students while I was teaching um, at the Faculty of Pharmacy, I gained insight into the students' behaviors and the cultural norms. And um, the people use the word normal, adi, is the way they do things. So I started to learn more about that. In regard to my um, research, though, I was looking at uh, measurable student learning outcomes and assessment of learning outcomes at the course program and institution level. Basically, what will the students be able to do when they end this program and how do we know? So I, I did mention briefly that it didn't appear to me that many people were interested or saw the relevance, nor why I was so excited about the college's programs and university undergoing accreditation that year. I learned about their standards and, and their process. So when I finally accepted the fact and was able to let go, I gained insight and clarity. And that led me to reframe my approach dealing with our partners, and I used my three-step facilitating change approach. So my path went from my normal to, to the new. Most of the Arab world comes from a place of strong faith, using phrases like God willing, inshallah, thank God, alhamdulillah, and also in Jordan they use the word adi a lot. This is our normal, this is adi, this is the way we do things. Okay? 
So um, they then moved during the Arab Spring to a place of seizing the day, having courage to change that they can collectively do with that collective voice, and resulting in the revolution. So my individual spring happened in parallel with the Arab Spring, but in reverse direction. These images just exemplify the path to change. I actually was in Egypt in January 2011, last year. I was with my sister, and everything was calm, and this is the Nile, and we're seeing this beautiful sunset. Well, a few days later, ended up, this is the day of the revolt, where there was the change, and the people had courage to make a difference. I'd like to share with you the three steps to facilitating change from the normal to the new. First, you start off with a vision, and everybody knows what their vision and dreams are for their institution. The next step is to present steps. What are the ways that we need to, um, what are the steps that we need to have in order to accomplish the vision? And most of those steps are universal steps. The third part is to present options, examples, best practices that are unique to the institution, taking on again that holistic approach, looking at the institution and how it, it relates to the country as well as to the globe and focusing on their mission. And then the institution chooses uh, what options they want to take. And we merely are the facilitators. We are the arrow through that change. And hopefully the arrow continues and propagates and has a rippling effect. <coughs> so while I was there in Jordan, I listened very closely to what the uh, university's vision was and also at the Faculty of Pharmacy what their vision was. And what I heard repeatedly was to have a thriving premier research institution and premier professional programs, especially in their doctoral of pharmacy program. And this vision to globally compete, uh, to have competitive institutions of higher ed. In the pharmacy department, they didn't only want to compete, but they also wanted to collaborate internationally. So the universal steps, some of them, uh, what, we're, what we're covering, is to show evidence of student learning and to show accountability, which we're all doing in all our universities. To have self-assessment, and we have external factors also that are requiring us to self-assess through accreditation and quality assurance. Another important aspect is to then be able to publicly disclose all this information. Now through a seminar, I was able to present options, bringing awareness, to the College of Pharmacy on student learning outcomes, presenting assessment loops, examples of accreditation standards, and professional programs. From here, that rippling effect did occur. From, this, uh, from the seminar at the with the Faculty of Pharmacy, the members gained interest and insight, and they actually be began exploring the options. The next step, what happened was that um, 20 universities and colleges, we came together collaboratively with the Higher Education Accreditation Commission, as well as Columbia University Middle East Research Center. They actually hosted the workshop, which was a very relevant, interactive, um, workshop where the faculty from all these universities, uh, public and private, were creating and developing the student learning, measurable student learning outcomes at the course, program, and institution level. And what was exciting for me is that even when I came back here, I heard back from faculty that they were actually running training sessions in their own institutions, very unique to them, and they were asking me if they could use the materials. Uh, that I developed and provided. So it didn't stop there. I was called back 
to uh, go to the University College of Bahrain. So this also had a rippling effect. Collaborators from Jordan to Bahrain, where I ran a similar workshop uh, for their faculty. It was similar, but not the same, because their mission is unique, and the country is uh, a, a different place, as well as their, their standards were different. So that was quite um, an opportunity for me, again, taking on that holistic approach. Many countries also have the vision of a thriving and competitive economy relevant to the global market. And um, the universal steps that can be taken is job creation and educating the workforce. So an option is using the community college as a model. So the US community college can play a pivotal role in educating the future workforce. The mission of community colleges is access and providing a seamless pathway from K through 12 from schools through community colleges and then transferring to universities or working directly or working as they're going through university. So the programs provide a strong foundation in liberal arts education to transfer and they offer accelerated formats unique to the student's needs as well as technical and career skills that are relevant to the workforce including internships and service and project-based learning activities. Our colleague who presented earlier was talking about biotechnology and we actually offer a biotechnology program at the college that I'm the dean of and our students are placed directly into industry. So community colleges are quick and responsive to the workforce changing needs so this is one option that may be considered in educating the workforce to build a thriving competitive economy. So my friends, we have the unique opportunity in our roles to facilitate the possibilities for all the springs in ourselves and the world.